Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome into Staff Gymnasium where tonight we've got a real barn burner for you. It's the reigning defending Division II state champion Brighton Bengals against the upcoming undefeated 9-0 Brockton Boxers. As always, I'm your man, Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Join alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. Miles, wow, that's a big shot to start the game. Yeah, five seconds into the game, and he hits that outside three-pointer. Abu Kaba coming up with a steal, ping-ponging around. Azor comes away with it. It's 3-0 Brighton. Azor out to Jalen Lee, who's got a number change tonight, normally number 24. Wearing number 32 and Sonny Okanlola down low off the glass and in. Yeah, nice strong move by Okanlola. Right underneath, use his body and put it right back up and in. Strong, strong, strong. Yep, strong. Good. Strong. Brighton is wearing their away cut, cut. gray jerseys. Yep. Orange numbers, white trim. Brockton, of course, in their home whites on, with Come red on. trim around the black numbers. From way downtown, the three is good for number four, DeVray Burns. Yeah, so we know Burns right now has got the hot hand outside, so they're going to have to get somebody on him on the outside. Okamola, pump fake, works his way inside. Now Lee had some time, stops, pops, long two, no good. Okamola tipping the rebound into the awaiting hands of Marlon Bento. Burns all the way in, no good. Brought down by Abu Kaba. Six to two, Brighton. Lee all the way in is fouled. Nobody scanning the Brighton roster. Very interesting. There's only two juniors. Everybody else is a senior. Yeah, very, uh, very poised veteran team that they that Brighton has out there this year. Lee for three, no good. Brighton with the rebound. That's number 32, Quincy Taylor. Now we're going to see Gerard Clark, 6'5", senior, into the game. He replaces Eric Nesmith. Interesting part of Brockton's roster there. Big man in the paint. Eldon Terry is out tonight. A one game absence. Not told the official reason, but he will be back Friday night against the New Bedford Whalers. Yeah, I'm sure he's a little disappointed that he's not at this game. Woo. Wow. Going down hard was Dries Harris. Yeah, that was on 14. Marlon Bento called for the push on Harris. 6.07 to go. Marcus Azor to Lee. Lee to Harris. Harris deep three is good. Yeah, nice job by Harris. Looked at the uh, open shot, set himself up and took it. Pass it cut. Pass it cut. Good. Pass it cut. Gap, this is the gap, small the forward, gap. number 20, Johnny Ortiz. He's only 5'3". Yeah, he's quick. And Harris is going to have his hands full this evening with him. Harris has height on him. It's just that, uh, like you said, he's quick. Ortiz. It is Harris called for the push on Ortiz. Another three for Burns is good. He's got three. all nine of Brighton's points. Now Lee inside for Oak and Lola, spinning pump fake. Now he takes it from the charity stripe. His two is good. Yeah, that was a beautiful soft touch on the shot in the paint for two. Nice job by the big man. Come up, Gerard. No, other way. Ortiz, deep three, off wow. the glass and in. He threw it up there with all the energy he had, fell to the floor and made the shot. 
Brighton with four shots from beyond the arc so far. All of them good. Oak and Lola for three off the mark. 12-7, the Bengals on top. And a foul is going to be called, I believe, against Abu Kaba. Hey, Mildred, Mildred, Mildred. Angelo, left side, Angelo. Come on, guys. Pay attention. Hold it. Set the down. Get out, get out, come on, Ortiz guys. into the big man, Gerard Clark. Out to Burns from way downtown. This one comes up short. Box has got to go after those rebounds. Everybody kind of stood around and looked at that rebound. I mean, that um, ball off the rim. Down low, good passing awareness. And Quincy Taylor comes up with the shot. It is 14 to seven. Brighton doubling up the boxers. And a turnover committed by the boxers. 4.16 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, boxers need to settle down right here. Ray Burns with nine of the 14 Bengals points. This one tipped into the Brockton bench. Nobody knows which direction it's going. It will be a Brockton ball. Yeah, it was definitely off Brighton. Lead to Okanlola, bad angle off the glass and in. Yeah, nice job. Okanlola posting up nicely for the two. 14 to nine, 3.45 to go in the first. Burns now, excellent hesitation. And it's put up by Taylor yet again, his second consecutive layup for the Bengals. Yeah, nice strong rebound by Taylor. Cabo driving into the basket is good. 16-11 and what's turning into a slugfest. Yeah, beautiful move by Cobb, a quick dash to the basket. Lee all the way in the one-handed slam for Jalen Lee and that brings the boxers within one possession, 16-13 to with 3.05 to go. Yeah, nice job by Lee. He made sure he had a handle on the ball before he went up and slammed it. Now Ortiz. And for Taylor, and his shot is good. Yeah, right there, Kaba committed to the uh, steal, and then he was beat to the basket. Kaba held up, now drives his way inside, counted and one for Abu Kaba. Yeah, Kaba made up for that defensive lapse at the other end of the court, and they made a nice offensive move to the basket. Chance for a three-point play here. Navon Reed, Jose Montero Jr. and Tejan Glenn Darty into the game for the boxers. We take a look at that phenomenal play by Abu Kaba. So Brockton now sending in their size, their biggest player active tonight, the 6'5. Tejan Glenn Darty, excuse me, 6'6 on the senior center for the boxers. It is 18 to 15. Wait, the good. boxers trying to climb their way back in. Good. Three out, three out, three out. Three out. Burns losing it, regaining the handles inside for Gerard Clark. Three on the clock. Clark spins, shoots, no good. Burns grabs the loose ball. And a short jumper off the glass and in for number 23, Messiah Merchinson. Ortiz is going to come back into the game. He replaces the sharpshooter, DeVray Burns. Merchantson working against Montero. Under two minutes to go. It's 20 to 15. Brighton on top. Now Taylor off to number five, Angelo Lee. Taylor down low, spinning around the world and in. Yeah, nice job by Brighton picking the shot. They picked the inside shot. 
Brockton playing some pretty good defense. Kaba spinning, finding a hole, and it's in. Ooh, that was a nice spin move by Kaba. 22-17 the score, Brighton on top. But Brockton is going stride for stride with the Bengals at the moment. Yeah, the box is finally warming up with their shooting. Now a three is good for number five, Angelo Lee. 40 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Montero's three, no good. Glenn Darty throws the rebound off of Navon Reed's foot and out of play. Brighton ball. Yeah, you can see these Brighton players. There's a number of shooters that can shoot from the outside on this team. Very dangerous team. A lot of seniors on this team. Matter of fact, all seniors, one junior. So very experienced, well-coached team that these boxers are going up against this evening with their undefeated record. Ortiz working his way in. Floater, a couple bounces off the rim, no good. Abu Kaba, excellent behind the back move to control the rebound. Now Montero. Therese Harris, corner three, good. Ooh. Nice job by the boxers, getting that ball down with pressure from the um, inbounds pass. Did a nice job getting it over there to the corner to Harris, and he hit the big shot. Buzzer sounds at the end of the first quarter. It is 25 to 20. The Brighton Bengals on top of the Brockton Boxers. Miles, this game was one that was circled on everybody's calendar. It's a battle of the coaches, Hugh Coleman and Bob Bowen. And then you've got two of the more talented teams in the state, the Brighton Bengals, the reigning defending Division II champions. And a team that a lot of people think could go all the way this year, the Brockton Boxers. Yeah, they could if um, they, they have the right attitude and um, going to each game. It's all about attitude, how you play going to each game. You can't take, take any game lightly. You can't be intimidated by the big games. Like, they can't be intimidated with Brighton and all their uh, experience. So they really need just to play their basketball game, come in here, hustle, play hard, and they just might come out of here with a win. This is a look at the buzzer beating three-point shot for Jerese Harris. One of his favorite spots on the floor, down deep in the corner, bad angle. Harris now in for Montero as the second quarter underway. Harris loses it out of play. Brighton takes over. Yeah, that's just a lack of concentration right there. I'm sure he knows it. Now Ortiz driving inside, goes up strong to the basket. No good, but in the right place at the right time was Quincy Taylor. And the 6'5 center made no mistake on the putback attempt. Yeah, what happened was his man, his man on defense committed to the little guard driving to the basket and, and left him open. When the rebound came, he was wide open. Louis Charles in for Dries Harris. Glenn Darty couldn't handle the inbounds pass from Marcinal Louis Charles. And now Johnny Ortiz has it. Ortiz stops, pops, two off the mark. Oak and Lola uncontested rebound, 27 to 20. Brighton up by a touchdown on the boxers. Montero Jr. for two no good. Lou, uh, Glenn Darty, excuse me. Yeah, Glenn. Couldn't grab the rebound. His yeah. hands look a little off tonight. Yeah, he's got to grab that ball. I don't know what happened. Look, he slapped it. Good job, Quincy. Ah. Montero Jr. getting up, but Quincy Taylor grabbing it, and a foul is going to be called. 
Yeah, Montero, he's got to he, he's got to go up for that rebound. He's got to grab the ball. You can't go up for the rebound and try to dribble the ball as you're coming down with the rebound. You got to grab it, get position on the floor, and then look for an outlet pass, especially if there's defenders on you. Correction, not a foul, but a timeout as Quincy Taylor was on the floor, called by head coach Hugh Coleman. Certainly one of the more animated coaches in the state, Miles. He's very loud right next yeah, to us. Yeah, very animated, but he's he's one of the best coaches as far as being in touch with your players, getting in their heads, so they will listen to him. And he's got a beautiful, I don't know if you saw it, uh, Mad Dog, but he's got his beautiful back-to-back um, -back championship, state championship ch uh, ring on his finger. And it almost was like a Super Bowl type ring. Very, very beautiful. Very large. Yes, yeah, very, very large. A lot of bling there. <laughs> With the coaching to back it up, Coach Coleman told me he expects to lose his voice tonight. Yeah. Ortiz off the mark on another two. Navon Reed with the rebound. Reed, three, good. 27-23, boxers down by four. Burns is gonna come back into the game for the Bengals as Ortiz can't match the height. Louis Charles off the glass, no good. Montero Jr. grabbing it, throwing it off a couple of legs to Oak and Lola. Oak and Lola fouled, but uh, yeah, no Yeah, he was call. fouled, but no call. And now a two-on-one the other way, and a oh! one-handed slam for number 15, oh! Gerard oh! Clark. And that brings wow. the fans to their feet. Big man gets up. I can get up, too. Big man slamming it home. Glenn Darty fouled by Gerard Clark. It was 6'5", probably two, 220. At least. He got uh, He almost brought the roof down here at Staff Gymnasium yeah. with that. That backboard shook a little bit, but it, it held a look up. at the dunk. Jalen Lee. And Abu Kaba going back into the game. Kaba will replace Glenn Darty. Crowd a little restless here after seeing Gerard Clark get up to the rim. When Darty comes out of the game in favor of Kaba. Burns now a three from the corner, in and out. Taken by number 23, Messiah Merchantson. Lee. Able to balance Kaba, free throw line two is good. Yeah, nice job, transition right there for the boxes. 29-26, it's a one possession game, brightened up by three, 5.20 left in the first half. Clark down low again, in and out. Clark again, he's fouled by Lola, who got hit in the face with an errant arm. Yeah, Brockton uh, made Brighton work for those shots right there. Clark good on his first attempt, 5.15 left in the second. And two or two is Clark, 31-26, back to a five-point lead for the Bengals. Kaba, three, good. Ooh, nice job by Kaba. 
Boxers Shook. within two of the closest they've been all game. Yep, shook his man loose and took the shot. It looked like a travel almost. Timeout called by Coach Coleman as being assaulted was Merchinson by Abu Kaba and Okinlola. Yeah, good defense by the boxers. I almost thought he, his foot moved a little bit, but there you go, the shot by, uh, who's that, Abu Kaba? As he shook his player, got enough distance from him to take that uh, shot, made it. But I think one of the things boxing have to work on here, if they want to stay with this uh, Brighton team, veteran Brighton team, they have to work on getting better rebounds on. They're not getting good rebounding on the um, defensive end. Um, Brighton's getting too many second and third attempts on, on their shots. So Brockton's got to work on their defensive rebounding. Well, this game has been one of those back and forth gritty shot for shot, haymaker for haymaker type games. And I think the one thing, Miles, that it could come down to is rebounding. Merchantson one handing it over to Clark. Clark for two, no good. Okinlola is pushed out of bounds by Burns, so it'll be a Brockton ball. Brockton now with a chance to tie it with four and a half to go in the second quarter. Yeah, good hustle by Abu Kaba. Louis Charles to Jalen Lee. Back to Louis Charles inside for Oak and Lolo. Oak and Lolo loses it to Ortiz. And Ortiz, one handing it up to Clark. And now Burns working his way inside. Back out to Ortiz. Driving baseline. His floater, no good, but fouled. He's going to be careful, the 5'3 senior. If he's going to be throwing his body around the way he is, there's a hey. lot of potential. There's a lot of bigger guys out there. Yeah, he definitely has no fear. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, with that afro he's got, that gives him about two or three more inches. Brighton has drawn closer in the size gap, but Brockton sent Jerry's Harris back out onto the floor. The smallest boxer on the floor at 5'10". Marcus Azor to Lee. Lee to Kaba. Kaba out to Harris in an offensive foul. Called on Abu Kaba. Yeah. And Reed's going to come in. For Kaba, who you know, has a couple of personal fouls. Now Taylor out to Ortiz, pump fake driving inside. For a little guy, Miles Ortiz really can get some springs yeah. in his legs. Yeah, he's really fast and he does have a lot of spring in his, his legs. Very dangerous player. Reed three, no good, gets his own rebound. Lee to Azor. Azor had an open shot. Instead loses it in the paint. Brighton picking it up. Azor fighting for it. Brighton able to rip it away and gain clear possession. Yeah, you don't see Azor losing the ball too many times when he's handling it. Ooh, nice Glenn block. Darty with his second block of the game. Yeah, if the boxers can consistently keep those long arms up, they will get more steals. Burns three. Wow. Good. And, and Burns got, got his um, pinky, his right pinky wrapped up in tape. 
and it is not affecting his shot at all. And it's going to be an offensive charge against Marcus Azor. Ortiz had his feet planted. Gerard Clark into the game, replacing Kobe Downey. And I don't think Ortiz had his feet planted. But enough there for a foul. Taylor getting his own rebound. Reed comes away with it. Avon Reed flying in. Whoa. Wow. And one for Avon Reed. Wow, what a move by the freshman. Somehow wiggled his way through. Got fouled and made the shot. Are we going to see this on replay? It's flying in, 33 right in the middle of your screen. Wow, nice shot. Reed, three points the old fashioned way. Brockton back within four, 36 32, two and a half to go in the first half. Got a playoff of Brockton. Clark now inside, getting it to Angela Lee, over to Burns, to Ortiz. Back to Burns, Ortiz, three, quick release is wow. good. Wow, great ball movement by the uh, Brighton High team. Then great shooting. They've got a high percentage on the three-point shot this evening in this first half. They haven't missed many from the outside. Reed three, this one's off the mark. Glenn Darty uncontested rebound. A push called on Kobe Downey, the 6'4 senior. Therese Harris sending it long for Jalen Lee. In for Glenn Darty, out to Reed. Reed gets around his man, out to Lee again. Now Reed, corner pump fake, loses it. Ortiz tipping it right to Marcus Azor. Now Harris in for Glenn Darty, and he is followed on the way up. He was thinking of an explanation point, Miles. Yeah, nice job by Darty. He didn't put the ball back on the floor. He went right up with it once he got it and got fouled. You're watching. 21 in the paint for Brockton. Puts it right up, does not put it on the floor. And, and smartly puts it right up and got fouled. Called a hit on Downey. Glenn Darty good on his first attempt. Montero in for Reed. Free throws are very, very important this evening for the boxes. Anytime they get to the uh, free throw line, they need to make shots. Thirty-nine to thirty-three, a minute and a half to go in the second quarter. No good on a second attempt it was Glenn Darty. Rebound uncontested to Angela Lee. Clark off the glass, no good. Darty with the rebound up for Darius, fresh into the game, and he loses it off of Brighton. And <laughs> head coach Coleman's he did a got spin. some expressions yeah. for that one. Did a pirouette with his hands on behind his head. Couldn't believe the call. It was close. Glenn Darty inside off the glass and in, finding an inch of space between two Bengals, Miles, and making no mistake on the layup. Exactly. He found a little hole in there to put that ball through the defense off the glass and in. Jump ball forced by Montero, who was fighting for it with Burns, but Brighton will retain possession. Burns to Ortiz. In for Clark oh. to Lee. Lee lost it. And Brockton will take over. Pleading his case.
the, the conversation is phenomenal on the Brighton sideline. Glenn Darty working his way wow. in high off glass, no good. Clark with the rebound. Underhanding it over to Ortiz. Ortiz flying oh. in. He puts it at the fifth gear yeah. instantly. Little, little Isaiah Thomas move there. Marcus Azor, there's a two tick difference between shot clock and game clock. 14 on the shot clock and 14.4 on the game clock. Remaining in the second quarter, 41 to 35 the score. This one sent in long for Jalen Lee. Brockton's gonna burn out as much of the clock. Azor fouled as his shot went up. A yep. block is called against Brighton. Nice job by Azor running that clock down and going into the paint making body contact while he's shooting and gets to the free throw line. And that is the third foul on Kobe Downey. Kobe, who do you think he was named after? Shameful up here in Massachusetts, somebody gonna name their kid Kobe. <laughs> the 6'4 center out of South Boston. It's the other interesting thing, Brighton can go into Technically, all of Boston and, and draw from that huge talent pool. Yeah. I mean, as can all of the other schools, but Brighton's been more successful at it as they've won three championships in the last four years. Buzzer sounds, and the first half has come to an end. It is 41 to 36 with Brighton on top of Brockton by five miles. This one's going to come down to rebounding, but the teams have traded a few haymakers so far. Yeah, rebounding is the most important thing. Like you said, Brockton's got to work on the, um, the defensive boards a little bit better, and um, they're going to have to come out on those guards that are uh, number four for uh, Burns there for, um, for Brighton. He's, he's got one of the hot hands, and there's someone else. But they're going to have to come out and put some, make them guy, put a hand in their face when they take that three-point shot. It's 41 to 36. The boxers trailing the Bengals at halftime. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Arthur E. Staff Gymnasium for second half action between the Brighton Bengals and your Brockton boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Journal alongside my broadcast partner, big game, Miles Jackson. Abu Kaba off the bat for three. Miles, there's got to be something about starting halves of this game and players taking threes. Yeah, yeah it's just the culture of the way they do things now, these young people. Nice job by Abu Kaba to get that rebound and put it right back up and in. It is 41 now to 38. Scratch that, 44 to 38. A six-point edge for the Bengals who are wearing away gray jerseys and white trim around orange numbers. The boxers, Harris from the corner, no good. The boxers in their home whites with red trim around the black numbers. Burns swatted from behind from Jalen Lee out of play, no foul called. Yeah, nice defense by the boxers there. They converged on the, on the uh, ball carrier, swatted it away. Your leaders for the Brighton Bengals DeVray Burns, four shots from beyond the arc. He is perfect with 12 points. Close to him, Johnny Ortiz with 10 points. And Quincy Taylor, the big man in the paint, also has 12 for Brighton. We're talking with head coach Hugh Coleman of the Bengals at halftime about what's up with Burns and his taped up pinky, now Dries Harris, no good but fouled by Burns. That was a smart, quick pass by, by uh, Azar to Harris, who was streaking to the basket. Nice job by Harris protecting the basketball, putting it up and getting fouled. So Burns texted Coach Coleman today, this morning, and says, Coach, I'm afraid I can't play. I hurt my pinky. My mom thinks it's fractured. 
She's not, she's not gonna let me play. So Coach Coleman says, we got one game and then we got a whole week off. You're gonna ice it until about half an hour before the game and then we're gonna tape it up. You're playing tonight. Yeah, classic case of coach knows best that Trump the mother knows best. And Coach, Burns was, coach has been was right. On fire yes, tonight. Coach was right. Ortiz floater, no good. Coming down with it was Gerard Clark up and in. Yeah, Abu Kaba, he's got to grab that rebound. He had it. He just didn't grab it. Harris to Azor Kaba to Lee for three, too long. Harris fighting for the rebound with Marlon Bento, who eventually won that board. 46-39, a seven point edge. Harris comes away with the ball. Jerese Harris out to Lee, had an open shot, instead drives inside, reverse Whoa. layup off the glass and in. Whoa, that was beautiful. Nice body movement by Jalen Lee under the basket. Here we go on the replay, having the Brighton Bengals. Oh. Looking like they're in the Museum of Fine Arts, admiring the artwork of Jalen Lee. Yeah, Brighton getting down quickly after that nice basket by the boxers. Transition game. Found the open man and uh, he was fouled. At the line is Quincy Taylor. Now with 13 points on the night. Forty-seven to forty-one, the score. Brighton on top. The last matchup of these two teams wasn't pretty. Brighton came in here to Staff Gymnasium last year, and sparing you many details, Brighton won by fifty, ninety-nine to forty-nine. Yeah, nice pop right there by the big man, right there at the free throw line. Okay, Lola with. The two just out of play. Brighton's ball. Burns in for Okinwola. Four on one with the 5 2 senior. The only bangle back, and Brockton can't hit the shot. Okinola comes up with the rebound. Kaba top of the key. Three, no good, spinning. Azor comes up with the rebound. Three consecutive offensive boards for the boxers, handing off to Abu Kaba. Kaba with a nice cut to Harris. Wide open three, looks good and it is. Nice job and, and what started that play was the offensive rebound of uh, Okinola. Okinola who kept the ball going. Another turnover, Marcus Azor coming up with the loose ball. Jalen Lee. All the way in, not enough mustard on it. Abu Kaba coming up with the rebound. This one picking up in intensity. Now Azor down low for Lee. Lee trying to get it to Okinola. Harris, three, good! Defense has brought this Brockton team, has took the Brockton team with a two point lead. All Brockton. defense. The Boxers have their first lead of the game. Now Abu Kaba in with a full head of steam off the glass, no good. Uh, you can't blow shots like that. Burns way downtown, this one off the mark. Quincy Taylor with the rebound off the glass and Ooh. in, and we are all tied up at 49. Yeah, you see. Coach Bowen is steaming over there on the defense, on that particular defensive play. Azor resetting the box's offense with 10 on the shot clock. Brockton getting ready to make wholesale changes. Jerese Harris, deflected pass now. Kaba down low, no good for three. Ortiz flying in. And it's gonna count the bucket. Azor I think would have been called for a goaltending.
Okay, we'll see it here on the replay though. Harris is three to take the Brockton lead, their first lead of the game. I think Brighton's calling for, well, Brighton might be calling for a tech on Azor, who grabbed the rim. I think the uh, referee was telling the coach for Brighton that uh, he hung on for uh, safety reasons. I didn't see the safety there. I think Brockton got away with the tech, possibly. Ortiz at the line. Ortiz is good on the three point play, 52 to 49 with three and a half to go in the third quarter. Kaba for Harris, and the chemistry was a little bit off. Yeah. Out of play. The new boxers into the game, Navon Reed, Tijan Glendardi, Jose Montero. Glendardi has done an excellent job tonight, Miles, of clogging the passing lanes. Yeah, he's done a good job keeping them big arms up. Making a few steals. This is Messiah Merchantson off to Ortiz. A three from the corner, no good. Judd. Clark getting the rebound yeah. off the glass and in, and Brighton's back up by five. Yeah, the big man. Nice job on the offensive boards. Reed thought about the three. Reconsiders. Drives inside, yeah. and it's good for two. A little shake and bake. Got the crowd ooh and an on on that one. Nice play by the freshman. Oh, where's the travel? A double dribble called yes. against the Bengals. And Messiah Merchinson, one of the two juniors on this Brighton roster. And DeVray Burns is going to come in for Merchinson. Three-point ball game, Brockton with the ball, at least momentarily. Burns all the way in, uncontested layup is good. Mm. Nice job by Burns protecting the basketball. And making the shot. Reed all the way across to eventually Harris. Harris to Clark, and in alone was Marlon Bento, and he converts the layup, 58. 51, a seven point lead for the Bengals. Yeah, Brighton playing some good defense, causing turnovers. Brockton's gonna have to do a better job protecting that ball. Kaba three, looked at his shot, and Ortiz gets the rebound. Burns three, good. Ooh. Unstoppable, when nobody's on him, he can't be stopped, he's gonna hit that shot. I don't understand why nobody gets on him. Coach Bob Bowen calling the Rare Brockton timeout. Yeah, good timeout by uh, Coach Bowen to get his team settled down. Because all of a sudden, Brighton put on a good display of defense and um, brought this uh, game back up to 10 points. Where just a few minutes ago, Brockton was the ones that had the momentum, playing good defense, and tied the basketball game. Brighton with a 10 point lead. Brockton at one point had a two point lead before exactly. Brighton went on this 13 to two run. Yep, right defensive uh, 13 to two run. So, Miles, what does Brockton have to do to stop the bleeding and claw their way back into it once again? Well, first of all, they, they've got to make, they got to make sure that passes. They got to make sure, Bro uh, Brighton's a very quick team, so Brockton must realize they can't make lazy passes got to be aware with these quick Brock, um, Brighton guards around, especially number 20. He can be a pain in the butt. 
So they've got to be careful. Montero all the way into the rim, and it's good. Ooh, nice job by Montero going coast to coast. Now Montero coming up with a steal. Too much mustard on it. And off the mark for Navon Reed. Yeah, great anticipation by Montero Jr. Like Just like you said, a little, little excited and a little bit too much mustard on the man that was wide open. Brockton working the full court press. Kaba with the steal, gets his own rebound off the glass and in on his second attempt. Yeah, they better make that uh, offensive rebound because that was a gimme that was missed at first, but they made up for it with the aggressive offensive rebounding. Time out called by Brighton. Miles, we haven't seen Brockton have to employ a press like this, but it seems to be working. Yeah, well, you know, they've been doing a little bit of press in the all game, but especially in the second half, they double teamed the ball carrier in, 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 in the other half of the court, and it seems to be working. So they might as well just keep it up because that's what got them back into the ball game until they started making some lazy passes, but you can see it's going to be tight all the way to the end. Well, you can see a little bit of the active coaching of head coach Hugh Coleman in the huddle and we're going to look at a couple of steals by Brockton. It is where you see the two men on the offensive uh, ball carrier where he smartly called timeout. Brockton has a good trap game going on right now. It has resulted in some turnovers. They just got to keep up the hard work. And again, they have to cover that outside shooter for Brighton, especially Burns, who is on fire, as you said, uh, Mad Dog. The discussion is how many timeouts Brighton has left. Brighton has two timeouts remaining for the entirety of the second half. There's one minute and seven seconds left in the third quarter. Ortiz getting by Marcino Louis Charles. Now Burns. Ortiz. Flying through but losing the ball and Ortiz is slow to get up. And Jose wow. Montero Jr. on the lamp is good. Wow, that was a nice move by Montero. He put on the Jets. Went right past his defender. But Brockton can't just let Brighton come back down and get an easy two underneath. Quick jabs for each of the teams. 63 to 57 the score. Brighton on top by six. And coming up with a steal, but losing it. But grabbing it was Ortiz. Ortiz short jumper is good. Shot clock off. 10 seconds to go. Brockton taking the time, bringing it up the court. Montero Jr. finding a hole to the bucket. No good. As the buzzer sounds, end of the third quarter, it's 65 to 57. Miles Brockton took a lead at one point, and since then they've fallen off, but now they've kind of gotten their way back into it a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it's a matter of being focused, and they have to be truly, totally in tune of what they're doing out there because this Brighton team is no joke. These guys are fast, they're dangerous, they can shoot, they can rebound. So Brockton's really got their hands full for this last eight minutes of this basketball game. Miles, the work of DeVray Burns of the Brighton Bengals, I think has gone underappreciated on the Brighton bench. He's got five from beyond the arc, 15 of the 65 points, and a couple of more from inside. He is having a game to remember, especially with a fractured finger. Yeah, especially with a fractured finger. Um, be between Burns and uh, Johnny Ortiz, one smallest guard out there, they've really been a pain in uh, Brockton's uh, side all this evening. Just when Brockton gets close or takes a two-point lead, 
somehow the Bengals reshift and pull pull back away. So somehow Brock's gonna have to figure about figure out a way how to keep this Bengals team in check when they become uh, when uh, Brock becomes really close. Now might be the time to do it. Ortiz off the floor. And this one deflected out of play off of Brockton. Yeah, and I think in that case, they had a three-on-one. Ortiz should have kept the ball. He was on the right-hand side. He's fast. He could have just went straight up unless an opening came, but uh, that was a tough play. Tough break for Brockton on that one. Hold's going to be called against Abu Kaba. A look at the steal by Montero Jr. Three for Angelo Lee from the corner, no good. Kaba with the rebound. Kaba all the way in, Whoa, no wait. good. Glenn Darty in the right place at the right time. His know. attempt, no good. I thought I saw a foul. Reed losing it, but was fouled by Angelo Lee. And Ortiz is going to come back into the game for the Bengals. Yeah, they're going to say he was fouled before he shot the ball. Coming out of the game is Messiah Merchantson. It's quite a name, Messiah Merchantson. His mom's probably went to church. Louis Charles, three, short. Out of play off of Navon Reed, Brighton takes over. Ortiz's pass into the pure height of the boxers. Taken away, Louis Charles, no foul. Wow. Glenn Darty fouled on his way up. Will be at the line for two. It's unbelievable, he was hammered. And it was no call. Coach Coleman giving his small guard tips on when to pass that ball. When they come down and um, squeeze you like that, just step back and then try to pass the basketball. You can see right here. Let's see if he was fouled. Oh, I guess. Clearly. There's some body contact. Nice job by our cameraman. Glendardi, two and two at the line. That draws the boxers back within six. 65 to 59. The minute to go, uh, excuse me, a minute into the fourth quarter. Bento inbounding it to Clark. His layup attempt no good, out of play, off of Brighton. He coached, with animated on that one for the for Brighton. He, since he didn't get, I saw his big man didn't get the foul call, jumped up in the air, spun around like a ballerina dancer. Harris three, no good. Loose ball, out of play, off of Brighton. You're absolutely correct, head coach Hugh Coleman, very animated. I'm surprised they didn't charge us to sit next to the Brighton bench. This one no good, Ortiz with the ball flying in wow. off the glass and in. Nice move by Ortiz. Oaken Lola and Abu Kaba going to come back into the game for Brockton. Reed to Harris to Junior. Let's go. Lee for a long two, no good. Reed coming down with the ball. Yvonne Reed finding Montero Junior. His shot, no good, fouled. And Jose Montero Junior will be at the line for a couple of shots. Merchantson. A 
there. Quincy Taylor called for the foul. Free throws critical with 5.48 left on the clock here in this ball game. Boxes down by, 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 seven, by nine. Kobe Downey who, excuse me, by eight, but down by eight points. So uh, boxes need to make their free throws. Kobe Downey and his three personal fouls back into the game for Brighton. Seven point edge for the Bengals. Ortiz up for the big man. Oh, that's a hard offensive foul taken by Junior Montero. And slow to get up is Gerard Clark. Yeah, brave, brave but courageous job by Montero to right stand here. his ground. Here we go. Woo! I mean, Montero's used to yeah. taking those hits from the defensive lineman yeah. as quarterback of the football team. A little bit different when you're not wearing pads. Oaken Lola, three, good! Big shot right there by the big man. 67 to 63, and Oaken Lola's failing it. And a block oh. called against Sonny Oaken Lola. That was a tough call on Oaken Lola. He really, he just kind of stood there, and the, the little guy just kind of bounced off of him. It wasn't like Okanola initiated contact. Glenn Darty in for Okanola. <laughs> Coach <laughs> Coleman looking at us. Why are they taking him out? He just hit a big three. Why? I wouldn't. I wouldn't take him out. Ortiz with another layup. 69 to 63, it's a six point ball game. Marcus Azor getting ready to come back into the game for the boxers. Jalen Lee inside. This one tipped to Ortiz. Burns three, no good. Glenn Darty with the rebound off to Kaba. Kaba all the way Whoa, in, blocked in the, the air. And they're going to call a hit against Clark. Ooh, nice drive by Abu Kaba. It's three fouls on Clark. Yeah. If he timed his swat a little better, it would have been all ball. Yeah, it would have been nice. It'd be nice if we could get the big man in foul trouble. Number 15, Clark, but right now he has three fouls with still four minutes, 41 seconds left in his ball game. So, he needs another quick foul to get him in foul trouble. Kaba is two or two at the line. Bring the boxers back within four. This one deflected by Lee. And Abu Kaba coming down with the eventual rebound. Kaba all the way in out to Harris, now to Lee. Azor stopping, popping, long two, no good. The boxers with the rebound. Harris for three off the front of the rim. Wow. Abu Kaba grabbing the rebound, coming down just long enough to put up a layup, and the boxers are within two. Abu Kaba did not waste no time. Got the rebound, no did not put it on the floor, and just threw it right back up in for the quick two. Here come the boxers. And a travel called against Jalen Lee. Yeah, that's just a mental mistake there by 32. Jalen Lee. You cannot make those type of mental errors in a ball game like this, playing a team like this. Brockton's going to come up big here. Gerard Clark off the floor. For the time being, he is replaced by Quincy Taylor. Ortiz. And a block called against Azor. Oh, come on. There was some yes. elbow initiated right there, ref. Unbelievable. A push Tuck. called against Azor. Let's take a look at this one. You're looking at 12 in white. Uh, that's yes. a weak. That's a weak call. That there was that was a non-call right there. I can see why Azor is a little upset. Oh, Azor coming up with a steal. It's four on two up court. Azor all the way off the glass and in. And boxers have tied it up at 69. Nice job by Azor. 
clamping down on the defense. Ortiz losing it, and a double dribble called against Johnny Ortiz. And head and coach, coach is out Hugh Coleman is halfway out on the court, court, begging for that not to be a double dribble. Did, did the ref now, tell him now the discussion says, calm down, stop swearing at us, or it's going to be a technical. So Coach Coleman says, well, what can I tell you guys to make better calls? Yeah, Coach Coleman is very upset right now. This one called against Johnny Ortiz. And that puts Brockton in a one and one shooting situation for the remainder of the 326 to go in this game. We're all tied up at 69. And Marcus Azor at the line. If he makes the first, he will get a second. Let's go. And he does just that. Yeah, Marcus Azor, solid player for this Brockton boxes. Let's go, He's strong. Knows how to protect the basketball when he's playing offense. Tough on defense. One of two rebound to Gerard Clark. Officially listed as a power forward. A three off the mark. Ortiz with the rebound. Out to DeVray Burns. And a steal for Glenn Darty. Glenn Darty thinking dunk. And he throws it down two handed. I like how he dunked. He dunked it with two hands to make sure he wasn't going to miss the shot. Good choice by Glenn Darty. Good defense by Glenn Darty. And another steal. This one to Abu Kaba. Boxers playing with emphasis. Harris, three, comes up short. Glenn Darty ripping down the rebound and stepping, uh, throwing it out of play off of Brighton. So Brockton retains possession. Miles, this one got blown off the rails real quick once Brockton started to claw their way back into it. Here's a look at the steal and the dunk for Glenn Darty. He grabs it with two hands and makes sure he throws it in there. Good choice by Glenn Darty. Azor stopping, popping, two, no good. Brockton's going to give Brighton a little bit of room. Burns, two, no good. And Glenn Darty wow, he's having a, a night in the paint. Yeah, he's been a beast in this fourth quarter on the rebound. That's what they need from him. Those rebounds, very important. Ortiz is going to come back into the game. He is going to replace Merchantson. A pretty creative uh, pass to Gerard Clark. And that's good, it's a one point ball game. Brockton with the lead, Oak and Lola going to come back into the game. Inside for Glenn Darty, And coming up with a steal, but grabbing it right back is Jalen Lee. Lee off the glass at a terrible yeah. angle, no good. Yeah. Burns three, no good. Clark off the glass, counted in one. For Gerard Clark. <laughs> Brighton back with the lead at 73 to 72, a minute and a half to go. Excellent coaching. We're in the bonus two. Yep. Don't force anything. Clark is good on his lone free throw attempt. 74 to 72. A two point edge for the Bengals now. Jalen Lee to Azor. Azor all the way in off the glass and in tie ball game. 
excellent, excellent decision by Azar. He saw the little opening, went right straight into the paint, made the shot. Out of play off of the leg of Abu Kaba. Marlon Bento going to put this one in play to Johnny Ortiz. Now Clark. Now Burns in for Clark. Clark spinning now, getting it back out to Burns. 15 on the shot clock for Brighton. Ortiz, three. No good. Okanlola with the rebound for Brockton. Yeah, nice job by Okanlola. Getting his position, Brockton has a chance to uh, take the lead here with less than 40 seconds. And Brockton's not gonna shoot this ball. Counted in one for Abu Kaba. Excellent decision by Abu Kaba. He saw the left side open, went right to, to the, into the paint, and tough shot because he put it with, up with his left hand. You see it right here, look at that. Nice decision by Abu Kaba to go to the basket and get the uh, foul drawn. Brockton sending everyone back. As Abu Kaba no good on the free throw attempt. There's a four second difference between shot clock and game clock. A two point edge for the boxers. Ortiz drawing the block against Oak and Lola. The only good thing about that, Brock is still 26 seconds left. Brockton will get the ball back. Shot clock will be off. The bad news is we got a good free throw shooter. We got a very good free throw shooter at the line, Johnny Ortiz. Okanlola has fouled out of this game. He is replaced by Glenn Darty. And Ortiz good on his first attempt. 76 to 75 with 26 seconds to go. And two or two at the line is Ortiz tie ball game. Azor. Oh, Brockton's gonna get the last shot here, Miles. You've got a couple of very good shooters. If I'm Brockton right here, I want it in the hands of Abu Kaba. 10 seconds to go. Brockton doesn't want to leave enough time for Brighton to pull off something. Cabo, long two, no good. Gets his own rebound. Florida for the win. No good. Buzzer sounds and we're going to overtime. Well, Brockton has their chances. It just didn't quite fall in. And like you said, we're going to an overtime thriller. Wow. You see on Brockton had their chances to make the shot that just wouldn't go in. They had one couple chance attempts. Right there. Kaba yep. right there. I think he kind of rushed the shot. Yeah. Thought he had a little bit less time than he did and not able to get another shot up. So the rules of overtime, there will be one four minute period each time each team with one timeout. And if we are still tied at the end of the four minutes, I'm not gonna say it, but it happened the other night in the uh, JV game, and it caused the varsity game to start about half an hour late. Well, Miles, this one is turned into a dandy. Definitely so, it's, um, it's definitely, um, exceeded our expectations. Box is gonna have to play smart basketball, play tough on the boards. So I did tell a little bit of a lie. One timeout added to what each team had at the end of regulation. So Brighton's got three timeouts and the boxers have four. Gerard, Gerard. 
a re-jump. Brighton's going with their shooting guys here. Montero tipping it all the way back. It's picked up by DeVray Burns. Burns five of six from beyond the arc, and this one swatted. Excellent stop by big game Miles Jackson. That's In the right place at the right time. That's what I do. There's the shot and the block by Glenn Darty, who's Good had defense. an excellent night on the defensive end of things tonight. Montero Jr. is the shot clock expired. Now Montero Jr. full head of steam off the back of the rim and in. And the boxers strike first in OT. Yeah, nice job by Montero going coast to coast. Playing good defense. Clark being assaulted by Abu Kaba and Montero. It's going to be a block against Montero. So look at the layup by Montero. Three fifteen to go in the OT period, 78-76. The fouls remain, so the next foul against Brockton, and Brighton will be in a double bonus situation. Yeah, that was a big rebound by Azor. Not letting the Tigers get the a shot there. Lee oh, with a nice big. move to create some space. That would have been big. That would have been that would have put the um Boxes up by five points. Unfortunately, went in and out. Brockton again working the press. Clark to Quincy. Taylor. Oh, where's the foul? Where's the offensive foul? Oh, come on. They're going to call it against Tejon Glenn Darty. A push. Let's have a look at this one. Right there, right there. should have been an offensive foul. Bad break for the boxes. If you're not going to call an offensive tr uh, foul, it should have been a travel. Exactly. So now it's Quincy Taylor at the line for two shots, a double bonus situation for the Bengals. Good on his first attempt. And 2-2 two two at the line is Taylor, and we again have a tie ball game, 78 to 78, 240 left in the extra period. Jalen Lee, as it is pass taken away by Burns, Burns up to Clark. Clark able to get it to Bento. Now Burns to Ortiz. Ortiz loses it to Montero. Over to Jalen Lee, all the way in, no good. And Clark comes away with it. Now it's three on one. Azor, the lone boxer, back. And he commits. That was a good a foul. Good that was, foul. That was a good foul. Three on one, and they couldn't put it in. Golden opportunity missed on the other end by the boxers to take a lead. You see right here, good defense by Azor. So they have to earn it at the free throw line. And basically, um, the Tigers have been making their shots from the free throw line. Good free throw shooting team. This bright Marlon, Tiger team. Marlon Bento at the line, missing his first. Yep, I just jinxed him. One of the few that have been missed this evening for the Bengals. Good on his second. Brighton with a one point lead, 79 to 78. Azor to Montero for three, no good. That was way off. Now Ortiz turning on the Jets, and he is fouled by Glenn Darty. Wow, that was a ticky tack foul. Wow. 
Brockton got not getting any breaks here. Let's see. Gee, I there was a little bit. I, I don't think with, with the threshold that they've let go tonight, I don't think there's enough there to call a foul. Glenn Darty. Yeah, they, they, the ref should have let him play on that one. Good defense. The assassin Harris in to replace Jose Montero Jr. And if there's a time they need his his uh, dead eye shooting, it's now. If they can get him open, Ortiz two a two, and it is now a three point lead for Brighton. Harris looking to get open beyond the arc. Abu Kaba to Azor. Azor pump fakes for three, gets it to Harris. Harris corner three, too long. And Quincy Taylor coming down with the rebound, a minute and a half to go. Oh. Would have been a travel if Brockton didn't come up with the ball. Kaba fouled a hold. He's the call. This one going against Marlon Bento. Gee, they were generous. Referees are generous on that one. Kaba hitting his first two-point ball game, 122 to go. Johnny, take it out, run the baseline. Hey, Brockton needs to uh, put some pressure They've been successful putting pressure on this Bengal team. They do just that. Jalen Lee coming up with the ball. Lee, Harris, three. Bang. Oh, oh, look good. And out of playoff of Brighton, Brockton will retain possession. This crowd would have went nuts if uh, Harris would have hit that shot. 111 on the clock. Uh, nice job by um, Darty. To put it off the backboard. No foul. No foul. No wow. foul. Burns is very slow to get up. I think now they're going to call something. Well, let's see on the they're replay. They're going to call a, a hold against Ortiz. Glenn Doherty right there uses the backboard smartly to put the easy two up. So when all is said and done, Jalen Lee at the charity stripe. For two shots. That's a big shot right there. Gives him a two point lead. If he can make this one, it'll be a three. 83 to 81, a two point lead for the boxers. Jalen Lee, no good on his second offensive board for Abu Kaba. Yeah, smartly, Abu Kaba brings it out front, lets some of this clock tick down with a less than a minute to go in this overtime. Counted in one for Azor. Oh, he's calling offensive foul. Offensive against Azor? No! 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 Let's the, see it on the replay, the, Mad Dog. The Boo Birds rain down here at Staff Gymnasium. He Man, certainly, he, he had the feet planted. Yeah, he had them planted. Gee, there wasn't a lot of contact there. Let's give the uh, Little Guard a Academy Award. Quick restart out of play. Brockton is going to take over. Brighton is. The coach is out there playing. Coleman's halfway out on the court <laughs> yelling for a timeout. I don't think anybody knows what happened there. Those, the foul called on Azor. That should have been two shots for the Bengals because both teams are in a double bonus. Instead, they want to inbound it under the basket for Brighton. The football pass, Hail Mary, three quarter of the court why, why went the out coach, of play while, while the coach, coach is, is trying, trying to call, call a timeout. Time and this is a typical <laughs> game, uh, Mad Dog. And there's a fan Brighton. behind us who's not, no, not too, happy. too happy with the officials. Says nobody paid to come in here and watch you guys. Here it is right here. This is a football. 
one-handed pass intended for Quincy Taylor out of play. And what you don't see in that replay, over to the right, the coach for Brighton is trying to call timeout, but nobody heard him. Fortunately for um, the boxers, nobody heard the coach. Well, Brockton's gonna have the ball underneath their own basket, which since it went out of bounds over on the Brighton side of the court, you think that's where the inbound is. Well, we're back underway after a lengthy wild sequence. Azor working against Burns. Oh, should have been a, there was a body contact. Azor starting and stopping inside, 10 on the clock. Now Azor high off glass. No oh! Good. Chips his own rebound to Glenn Darty. Yes, Glenn Darty yes. off the glass and in. And the Boxers have a four point lead, 20 seconds to go. Ortiz to Burns for three, no good. And out of play off of the Brighton Bengals. I, I tell you, Glenn Darty has been a monster in the fourth in the overtime game, camping out underneath the basket doing his job getting the offensive boards as well as the defensive boards. Brockton's gonna call a timeout here. It's 85-81, 15 seconds left, no shot clock. Brockton with the ball that should pretty much wrap up a wild, crazy night here at yeah, Staff Gymnasium. Yeah, you can see right there on the replay, Glenn Darty right underneath, concentrating on that offensive rebound, gets it and put it smartly, puts it on, in, off the backboard and in the um, hoop. Well, Miles, you got one game ball to give to a player of each side. Who's it going to be? I tell you, for the, for the Brockton Boxers, I have to give it to Glenn Darty because he's been so important with um, Abu Kaba, excuse me, Okendola fouling out in that fourth quarter. He's really stepped up, kept his composure mentally, stayed in the game, and did his job. As far as on the other side, I tell you, that it, it's between the little guy, Ortiz, and uh, number 15, Clark, he's been a menace inside the paint. Big man, been hitting shots, getting rebounds. It, it's just hard to say with, um, with Brighton's team, either one. Well, this one has certainly lived up to all of the hype. We're back at it on Friday night here at Staff Gymnasium. A very good matchup. The Brian Rudolph-led New Bedford Whalers come to town to face the Boxers. And a quick foul stops the clock with 13.3. Azor will be at the line. I tell you, Azor's, enough. Azor's right there in second place for MVP of this ball game. He's really stepped up, protected the basketball, gone to the hole when they've given him a little room, made the shots. He's done a good job this evening all around this whole basketball game. Brockton sending every man back. And Azor missing his first attempt. Let's go, win your time, make a play. Five point edge for the boxers. Ortiz grabs it, takes a three, no good. Glendardi with the rebound and Azor spinning around Ortiz and that will pretty much do it. Brighton's going to throw in the towel. The buzzer sounds and Miles, this roller coaster has come to an end. The Boxers move to 10 and 0 on the year. They are undefeated. Yeah, Boxers really earned this victory this evening. They adjusted, I'd say about the late in the second quarter, third quarter, they adjusted on the board because Brighton was really killing them on the offense and defensive board, but Brockton came out in that second half, really uh, crashed the boards on both ends of the court kept their composure at the end, especially in the overtime, and pulled out another victory and kept their uh, undefeated streak going. Brighton started off the right way. They held the boxers in in bay for uh, for a majority of the first half. It, and Brockton able to claw their way back in, not once but twice from double digits down to get the victory. Yeah, exactly. With Brockton's defense, Brighton kind of uh, uh, fell off on the outside shooting in that fourth quarter and overtime. 86 to 81, your final score. The Brockton Boxers earn a thrilling victory over the Brighton Bengals. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. We'll see you Friday night against the New Bedford Whalers.